What's up, Simonics, and welcome back to a new quick win. Today, we're talking once again about HTTP calls, and especially, we will use the Capacitor native HTTP plugin. This plugin is pretty great as it will help you to solve course issues only on a device, more on that later. Uh, you can manage cookies with that plugin and you can even download files with that plugin. And we will take a look at the first and the third option. We won't take a closer look at cookies. Uh, if you want to see something about that, just leave a comment. If you want to follow along the course, uh, the code of this video, go check out link below the video for all Ionic Academy members. And if you're not yet a member, go check it out, ionicacademy.com, my place to help you with everything Ionic, courses, community, templates, everything that you need to get started and get fast with Ionic. So let's dive into today's topic and build a cool application to solve course issues and download files. Alright, let's get started with our application. We're gonna start today, as always, with a blank new Ionic application and we're gonna generate one service because we will make the native HTTP calls in that service and then you can continue by installing the Capacitor Community HTTP plugin. We'll take a look at this in a second. Uh, as well, I recommend to run the first Ionic build so you can add the native platforms because we really need to test those things on a real device. Now, let's take a quick look at the plugin. Can we make this a bit bigger? Right, there we go. Um, a very nice plugin that I think Max Lynch actually himself started like a year ago, perhaps even more. Can be used as well with Capacitor 2, uh, but right now it's already uh, made for Capacitor 3. So if you want to use an older version uh, or your application is still using Capacitor 2, make sure you install it in that way. Otherwise, the cool thing is we don't need any configuration anymore. So previously with Capacitor 2, we still had to register the plugin in the main activity of Enride. That's completely unnecessary. And we can dive directly into the usage. Uh, but actually we won't do that <laughs> because first I wanna show you a little problem that you usually encounter uh, uh, and that maybe brought you to this video. So let's say you have a standard HTTP call like that. You're using uh, the Angular HTTP client. You've injected that into your module. Um, so then you try to access that URL and just try to log out some data. Cool, uh, usually that works pretty good if your uh, API is nice, but if you're using a public API, it can lead to some problems, uh, especially if you implement it in the service while you want to implement it in the home page, that of course makes no sense. So this should just be a quick uh, showcase. Uh, standard, let's just call it like this. And what we're gonna see with that call is once we hit the call, we get that nice little course issue, no access control, origin header. Now you got multiple ways to solve that problem. One way that we used in the past as well is to create your um, own proxy. That is possible as well. Uh, we had a quick win and video on that in the past. Uh, that looked like this, how to fix any course issues with a proxy. Uh, it's actually not too hard to create your uh, course anywhere proxy and upload it to Heroku. So give that a try if you want to. Second option is to, uh, well, maybe it's even version uh, the recommendation zero because try to fix that course issue on the server side. But sometimes that's just not possible. The API is controlled by someone else. Uh, they just don't want to enable course. Um, in that case, we're left only with one option and that is using a different plugin. So on the web, uh, we can't access it. Uh, I can also show you the same. I tried to open my inspection tools. I'm using the inspect app for debugging iOS right now. So in that case, we see the same result cannot load due to access control checks. Now everything that we do with a native HTTP plugin from Capacitor in the next steps won't solve the problem on the web. The reason is simple. Um, the web implementation, yeah, I'm really prepared today. Uh, the web implementation of the Capacitor HTTP plugin looks like this. Uh, we can scroll down where the request function is. For the web, they will simply use fetch. 
It's not like they use any magic on the web or anything else. They just use plain fetch and that won't solve your course issues. Um, that's a nice fallback for the web. You could, if you want to, and we've done this in the past also, uh, provide your own logic. So only hybrid, meaning native iOS and Android apps make uh, use of the HTTP plugin. And on the web, you will use the Angular HTTP client if you prefer that um, uh, to the standard fetch API. That is completely up to you. Today, we will just stick to that. Just as a quick uh, behind the scenes why it's not working on the web. But at least we can fix this for our uh, application on a real device. So let's inject now the HTTP service and get into the code. Within our HTTP service, we're going to implement a simple function that we call do get. That's basically what we or the application now should uh, call for every HTTP call that you want to make. And what we need to do is basically call the HTTP plugin. Nice import. Thanks. And then we can use a bunch of functions. Now, today we won't get into cookies, uh, just a quick word. With that plugin, you can quite easily manage, set, delete your cookies if you're working with cookies. Otherwise, you can use the standard HTTP functions, get, patch, post, put. Um, those are specific functions and like delete, or you could just use request and then use the, the method like this. So that's completely up to you. Uh, it's not a sign. Yeah, it still requires the URL. So it could look like this. That would be just fine. Otherwise, you can also do it like this. You can define your own options object. And if you're not sure what the options object looks like, just dive into the interface. That's basically always my recommendation. Um, HTTP options only requires a URL and everything else is optional. Method, params, data, headers timeout, really uh, response type, a lot of those things um, should be enough to configure your call. Now, usually if I now call the HTTP plugin get function and pass in my options, uh, as a result, I will get a promise HTTP response. If you're used to working with observables from the Angular HTTP client, I recommend that you simply wrap this with from. Um, by wrapping it with from and can we get the import? Mm, nice. Uh, the signature of our function changes to an observable HTTP response. And that feels, well, just a bit more natural um, if you otherwise have used or perhaps even used in other places the standard HTTP client. Uh, next to this, a quick example, this could also be a post request, once again, specifying your options and then doing the same uh, request or get or post, really, uh, multiple ways to do this. Now let's see how we can put that into action in our page. I will actually bring in the content for our HTML so we can see something. Uh, I just added two buttons for native call to our function and a download file, which we will also implement in the second step. So let's put those into our class. And then we got, well, we can comment out the image part for now. I will definitely forget about <laughs> uh, recommending that in my image null. That's also for the second part. Uh, as a result from the API, we will get one object which has, well, a lot of items and we can just iterate them. That's really not the, the most important part. We can also just lock it out. That's fine for today as well. And we're going to go ahead with our HTTP service now to make a get request. Now, the only thing we need to specify is the URL. Um, another idea would be to actually have another kind of API service uh, because I really wouldn't recommend to have those URLs in your pages. So you would then use this HTTP service or treat it more like a utility service, which you use then from your API service. That means your API service has something like get games or get something where the URL is specified and then makes a call to the HTTP service. And your pages would never really uh, work with that HTTP service or utility. 
just for today I didn't want to add just another uh, service but I would highly recommend it and not have the URL in here okay with that information in place let's hit the subscribe block and we're gonna lock out our response and at the same time set our data to response that I think specials was the key within that result so let's see on the web uh, uh, <laughs> What is that? <laughs> I've never seen that before. Uh, 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 message that, uh, yeah, I think the live reload may be messed up or homepage do get does not exist on HTTP servers. Well, it kind of exists. <laughs> I don't know what you see in that service, but I would definitely say it exists. Uh, anyway, let's just restart. Just as a quick uh, information, if you've been wondering how I got the live reload on the device, that is exactly what I run. Ionic Cap run iOS dash dash live reload external. I usually use source map faults because it made debugging easier, but I read that it's deprecated, so perhaps this will be removed in the future. Anyway, now it's working again, and we see on the web we are still getting the same error. That's what I explained before. We're using fetch, so no wonder. Let's do the same native HTTP call in here and inspect our application. And as a result, can we, do we actually implement something? Yeah, we see that we get back this result. And in fact, the result is wrapped in data specials. But the good news is we actually get a result. So we can just put in the data in here and then let's do a call once again. And we're finally able to get the data on a device. Um, that was kind of hidden API from Steam. Maybe we should do a tutorial about this. Let me know if you're interested in something with the Steam API. Could be possible in the future. Now, that was part one. We've now been able to overcome the course issues that we encountered before by using the native Capacitor HTTP plugin. As I said, there are many more functionalities on that plugin like uh, working with cookies, uh, defining headers and other uh, information for the uh, HTTP call. But that is the rough or the basic setup that I recommend plus another service that basically handles this as a utility service. So your pages won't really work with that HTTP service. But what you can do as well with um, the plugin is downloading and uploading files. And that was quite interesting. So in order to do so, we can extend our start SS, uh, our start shell script because you now need to install the Capacitor file system. Okay, uh, I've already done that, of course, as a little preparation. And then we can dive directly into our HTTP service and create a function download file. So to download a file, we first of all need to define some options. I've uploaded a file to DigitalOcean, um, and at this point we already see we need access to the file system, because this time we also need to specify a file path and a file directory, and that directory comes directly from Capacitor file system. Uh, once we've got those in place, we can make the actual call. Now, uh, in this case, I will just stick to, um, okay, that's a long word, <laughs> HTTP download file result. I will just stick to promises, um, but as a little exercise for you, perhaps try and wrap that whole function as an observable as well, so you can integrate it a lot better into your stream, uh, no, into your code. We pass in the options and we should be able to get a nice little response. Uh, for this, let's just call our function here. This start HTTP service download file, and because it's a promise, we're now using then. Okay, let's log out. Finally, the result in here as well as a little well exercise, and then let's see what's happened on the web. On the web, we get back a blob. That's interesting. We should be able to convert that blob somehow into an image. Uh, let's take a look at a device and the debugging tools here. Download a file and we get back a path to a file. So on a device, the plugin has really downloaded that file already with just really with just those few lines into a local file. I think that's pretty cool. 
And I think that's a very good use case of that plugin, perhaps. Um, maybe if you don't even encounter course issues, but only want to download a file, maybe it's worth giving this plugin just for that a try. Now, um, if we also want to uh, display it, let me quickly bring in a few functions. Because first, we need a little helper function for the web to convert a blob to a base64 string. Once we got that in place, we can put in our logic. So we've seen on the web, we got a blob on a mobile uh, device, we got a path. So if we got a path, we will use the capacitor file system plugin to read that file. Uh, actually, the path isn't doesn't look like that. This should be the name, right? So let's do a quick change. What could go wrong with my code? Of course, everything will go wrong. But just make sure you're using the same directory. And then we can return uh, the data from that file plus the base64 information. In case we're on the web, we just gonna return our function which converts a blob to a base64 string. And now let's hit save and check out the applications again. On the web, we now finally get back this cool little string here. That looks good. Uh, on the mobile device, we in the end get back this little string. No, that's pretty good. Uh, that means we just need to set my image to the data. This dot my image equals result, and then we're mostly good. Especially on a mobile device, we are at this point fine. That means we've downloaded a file, stored it locally, and read the file from there and presented it just with a few lines of capacitor code. On the web, the story is a bit different because, well, because it just works. Um, that wasn't what I, what I expected. That's certainly not what happened before. <laughs> um, well, well, that's interesting. Because in the past, it didn't work like that. You still had to use the uh, private dump sanitizer. I will just, to make this complete, bring it in because I'm not sure if that is really, if that is correct right now. <laughs> in that case, uh, we would just use it like this to uh, bypass trust resource URL and then uh, it will be fine for Angular. I don't know why it was fine for Angular right now already. That really doesn't look right to me. So I think you definitely need the dump sanitizer to sanitize the base64 string, but then you're able to have the same code running on the web and on iOS. Once again, the native HTTP call, uh, which is preventing the course issues, is only working on here. On the web, it is still using the fetch API. So for the web, you still have to either fix the API or use the course proxy like shown in my other quick win. All right, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to the native Capacitor HTTP plugin. Once again, as a recap, if you encounter course issues, this plugin will help you to at least solve them on a device. If you also need a web implementation, well, you need to either talk to the API uh, and let course be enabled in there, or you can use your own proxy to overcome course issues on the web, but with that plugin, it won't just magically work. Also, this plugin is definitely great for managing your cookies and for downloading and uploading files. Perhaps we will just use it for that uh, later part, as in the past we had a Kotova plugin uh, at some point that was discontinued. So perhaps it's just worth using it uh, only for downloading and uploading files because that worked really great with just a small snippet of code. We were able to download files and it worked both on the web and on a mobile device. So give the plugin a try and of course leave a like and hit the subscribe button so you get notified about all the upcoming Ionic videos, you know, fresh content every week. With that, I hope you will have a great week and I will catch you next time. So happy coding, Simon.